Hello, Orchid friends. Welcome back to my channel. Wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day, staying healthy, and staying safe. Today we have my Phalaenopsis Keldat Twinkle. This is a complex hybrid that I purchased from a local grocery store four or five years ago. So it's been a while, and this video clip is from its last blooming cycle. It was doing really well, and the reason I included this video clip is to give you a reference point. In fact, this is what I think I will do going forward whenever I can easily find the video clips from pre it's an orchid's previous cycle. I would try to include it so that way you have a reference point. So great suggestion for whoever that suggested this. Um, I can't remember exactly who you are, but um, thank you. So last time, it also gave me quite a few blooms and I was really happy for another thing that this orchid did and it started to put out fragrance. When I first purchased this orchid, I remember the first year I was thinking to myself, other people's Cal that Twinkle all have fragrance. How come mine doesn't? Well, um, it's it changed completely started it started to produce fragrance i think during its second uh rebloom so the second year rebloom it started to put out fragrance in this video at that time it was still potted in its original media mixture and original container what you see here that's the container that came with me from the store the original media was a mixture of spec sphagnum moss and bark chip. And later you'll see that I have tra trans transported to um, a different setup. And I'll explain that a little bit more. And for those of you who actually watched the repot video of this orchid, you already know what kind of setup I'm referring to. But overall, I think this orchid did really well last year and this year it also did just as good if not better. So coming up, here is what it looks like at the beginning of its bloom cycle. I was busy so I actually didn't take as many photos as I would like to but essentially the flower spike came out really strong and it just quickly started to develop its buds but this time around the flower spike was a little weird kind of come out and then it decided to go into a different direction um, but no complaint because this orchid is still very very uh, sturdy uh, this time around I also pay especially attention when I'm handling this orchid and and specifically I wanted to make sure that I'm not moving it too much and that it also receives the same light source constantly so that the flower spike can be as neat and straight as possible for better display and this time around it actually did very well I did very well <laughs> I, I always make sure I put it back at the exact location the same angle so that way the flower spike would be straight the orchid currently now is in a inorganic substrate mixture and the reason I said mixture is I use a combination of hydrocorn and manto clay. Hydrocorn is a type of expanded pebble, um, kind of like Leica beads except hydrocorn are slightly more irregular, sh irregular shape. It's round but it's irregular. Leica beads are completely perfect round balls. And for mantle clay, the other kinds of pebble, they're smaller clay pebbles. They're not expanded per se. They're just regular clay pot material that make, that are made into tiny little bits, pieces. Kind of like what you would get in Europe, a, a product called ceramics, kind of like that. But manto clay typically is really used for bonsais because um, they're, it's, it's heavier too, by the way. So I purchased Manto Clay from Bansai Jack here in the United States. 
And then Hydrocorn, I basically just, I think I googled it and then Amazon popped up and it was the gold label Hydrocorn and I just got a bag and you know, it's more than enough. So with the mixture, with the, with the combination of Hydrocorn and Manto Clay, I have more than enough inorganic medium, uh, media to use, to work with. Now this is the video clip for this orchid's current bloom cycle. The display is relatively straight and neat, which I enjoy, and it also has fragrance. This kind of fragrance is very pleasant in a way that it's not too strong, and it's almost very similar to like Asian orchids. Um, it's light, it, it's subtle, but then you can tell that it's, it, it's fragrant. Now let's quickly talk about care before this video gets too long. This orchid receives 25% strength fertilizer, so quarter strength fertilizer every week, along with quarter cup of water. If it's winter, I reduce the water amount to about one eighth of a cup, but it goes between quarter cup to one eighth of a cup. And at the end of the month, the last watering cycle, I don't just give them water, I actually soak my orchids. So with the double cup, I basically just fill up the water all the way until almost, you know, the top of the cup, let it soak for a couple hours. And then I would take out the inner pot to, to then let the water drink through the, the bottom drainage hole at the bottom. And then I put it back into the blue cup and that's it. It's a very easy, simple process. And by the way, for those of you who tend to forget that your workers are being soaked in water, I'd recommend that you soak them at a different place or somehow, you know, do, do it in a way so that you remember or you see them because they're out of place. It's easier to spot them and then you'll remember that they're still being soaked. Because what I have done, mistakenly you know this is a mistake I, I actually had a couple orchids sitting in water i forgot they were being that they, they were, i was soaking them i just they, they were in that water for like two almost three days <laughs> before i realized it thankfully no damage was done but you want to make sure that you remember or set yourself a timer or something so that you remember certain orchids if not all your orchids are still deep in water <laughs> Overall, I think this is a good orchid to have. For the price I pay and the performance it gives me and the joy that it brings me, I think it's such a good price. And every year it just reblooms and it brings me th that, that fragrance I enjoy. So, and the color too, you can't beat the color, the purple and the white. So if you don't have this one, try to find one and I think you'll like it very much as well. This is all I have for you today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to get more orchid related videos from my channel, please subscribe and turn on the notification. I want to wish you happy growing and I will talk to you in my next video. Ciao!